session is about cleaning up your WordPress portal. So that's your homepage. I was going to say state you, but state you is our homepage. That's the example we're going to use today. Yours is probably not called that, I hope. <laughs> Um, Otherwise, that's an elaborate scam. <laughs> oh, yeah, very much so. Um, but just going through the WordPress homepage that is where all of your users log in to access their accounts, where sign up happens. Just, I don't really know how many more ways to say this is the center of everything. This is yeah. where the magic happens. I think one one of the reasons we, you know, to peel back the curtain, why, why we even decided it would be important to talk about this is mm -hmm. it is in all likelihood, one of the most trafficked sites on your domain of one's own. Yeah. And maybe, you know, there are obviously exceptions to that. We definitely see domain of one's own domain of one's own servers that have like a particular, maybe there's like an OER that's really popular, yeah. something like that. But it is important to know that this is the site that your users using domain of one's own are logging into. Right. So if it's slow, your domain of one's own is going to feel slow <laughs> for the folks that are trying to use their cPanel or um, get stuff done. So it's really important that the site is working well, is secure, um, and is um, updated and things like that. So um, we'll dig into some things that you can look at and, and what to do. But before we maybe get there, we it'd probably be good to talk about what we do at Reclaim yeah. for this site because we do we we do have particular eyes on this site in a way that we may not for like a random installation student's in someone... WordPress site, yeah. right? So um, this this being the front, of, front end of your domain of one's own, we will be managing things like PHP versions for you. Um, you won't have to worry about that. We'll, we'll make sure that's updated and set appropriately. Yeah. Um, we have that infinite WordPress, right? Yep. And we are using a service called infinite WordPress to allow us to make sure that um, basically every domain of one's own um, uh, WordPress front end is updated. And that includes the version of WordPress itself, any plugins that are installed that are available via the WordPress plugin repository, um, and any themes that are installed, although we are using our own custom theme. So that yeah. actually doesn't have much to do with this particular thing. Um, but um, in, in but, theory. But yeah, but we, we manage those updates. So what that leaves for you is sort of what plugins are installed other than the uh, ones that are required. And we'll mm -hmm. talk about what those are. Um, and you know, you, you're, you can make design changes as long as you stay within the theme. If you mm -hmm. want to change to a different theme, you got to let us know because we have to port our customizations over to that theme. So that's, that's a bit of a process. And personally, unless you have very specific needs, I wouldn't really recommend going that route of customizing your domain in one zone. We'll talk about some strategies of what you can do to customize this and in a really, um, you know, that gives you creative control, but also is pretty easy to um, do in terms of, you don't need to have like a dev environment and things like that. Yeah. Um, I'll pull up, uh, this is our state U portal, lovely state university, Beautiful. you know? Uh, I'm already logged in here, of course, um, but if I go to the, the back end here, if I click on admin, um, this is what state you look like on the back end. And mm -hmm. I'm going to go right to talk about plugins. So we'll talk through what plugins are here and what they do and what ones you definitely don't want to disable. That way, if you have other plugins that you're looking at and you're like, do we need these? That can kind of help inform that for you. So mm -hmm. um, there's a couple here that I have deactivated that we'll, we'll actually talk about later. Um, but right, right away going down the list here, easy bootstrap short code. Um, this is gonna be on pretty much every domain of one's own. This is something that is used by our customizations or we use as part of our customization. So you're not gonna wanna deactivate this. This can um, actually- it just makes things run. Yeah, you, you, this can break certain elements of the theme. Um, Gravity Forms. So if you are using the request form um, for Domain One's Own, meaning that people have to fill a form out and then you go in and set them as an author, don't disable that. You may also have Ninja Forms. We used to use Ninja Forms. Um, whatever form plugin works for you is, is fine, honestly. 
Um, but if you want to, we are kind of, we are tending to move forward with gravity forms. And mm -hmm. if you want to be moved over from Ninja forms to gravity forms, we can definitely get that installed for you and talk with you about next steps there. So yeah. just put in a ticket and let us know. Um, limit login attempts. Um, this isn't like vital, but we highly recommend this as a security measure. This will basically prevent, um, folks from, you know, uh, guessing, trying to guess WordPress brute passwords force. and logging yeah. in. Brute force is the word I was looking for. Thank you. There you go. Um, so this is going to be um, activated by default. We would recommend you leave that activated. I believe Log it's in. part of the default WordPress package for every installation as well. Yes. Yeah, um, that is correct. Uh, login WP, um, formerly Peter's Login Redirect. It got such a worse name. Peter's Login Redirect was so better. So much better <laughs> of a name, in my opinion. I feel like it, I was going to say it feels less informative, but it's not. It's kind of laterally uninformative. I mean, I don't really know Peter's last name. That's true. <laughs> right? But um, I feel like I, I could, you know, Peter, what are you doing? Um, anyway, I've never had this plug-in break, <laughs> but <laughs> um, now it's just login WP team. I don't know who that is. So yeah. um, what <laughs> this is, this is part of what makes uh <laughs> domain of one's own work you want to leave this enabled this makes sure that when folks log into the wordpress site that they are redirected to that dashboard page where the cpanel is shown or the the request form so mm -hmm. that is part of what makes this this whole setup work so you're going to want to make sure that's enabled remove dashboard access is possibly even more important um, this prevents anyone with the author or really any role other than a uh, subscriber to be able to get into this dashboard. The only um, user that can get back here is admin users, which is what you want. Yeah. Um, this is good because this is a WordPress site and the way Domain of One's Own works is we use the built-in roles to determine who is allowed to access cPanels or not. And author does that. Author also by default in WordPress can author posts. You don't really want them writing blog posts on this site. So this prevents that from happening. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's important to leave there. User switching, it's great. Um, you probably have encountered this one. Um, you do have to, uh, the user switching plugin lets us go to the user's page and pick any person from the list and log in as them, which is great. Um, WordPress social login, that for state U is what we use for logins. Um, you are more likely to have a SSO Singles, plugin yeah. of some kind. Um, we do have some folks that have no SSO, but uh, most most schools do. That's kind of the yeah. primary reason you have domain of one's own, honestly. Um, and so you either probably have a plugin that does LDAP or probably more commonly we have um, Shibboleth. SAML, uh, SAML, Shibboleth, um, some o OAuth. Uh plugins stuff yeah out. okta is is sometimes done via saml kind of depends yeah. so there's Lots gonna be stuff. some authentication plugin like that mm -hmm. um so that will be one you won't want to disable that otherwise Nobody you can and it. no one else will be able to log into the wordpress site anymore and you'll have to have us turn it back on so um which we can do but uh yeah, and then finally, you may have a caching plugin installed. This is not on every domain of one's own, um, but we've found that some higher traffic sites do benefit from it. So there are there are probably some of you that have WP Supercache is the one we typically use. Mm -hmm. um, there are other caching plugins that work fine, but um, this is not actually essential to the site working. But if you have this enabled, I wouldn't disable it. It's going to make your site faster. So. Yeah. It's not um, going to hurt, probably going to yeah, hurt. Yeah, based wow. on, um, we actually have um, a article that um, I can throw in Discord, but, um, you know, we can, eh, well, I'll just pull it up too. Um, but uh, we have a, uh, using a caching plugin with WordPress. WordPress. Top of the list. And uh, right here we mention how to enable a caching plugin and how to use WP Super Cache in particular. If you're doing this on a different site, say not your domain of one's own site, um, this is uh, pretty much always a benefit. I mean, there's really, um, especially WP Super Caches, I've not very had very many issues with it, like breaking things. It's pretty mm -hmm. conservative, um, so that's it's a it's a good option. So it will be enabled on some of your sites, but not all. But yeah, these are the core things that you're gonna have. Um, 
we have some more on uh we'll, we'll talk about this plugin in a session at the end of day two um mm -hmm. so you know i'm not going to do it right now that's uh, we'll showcase that user info who made that one i made this one but it, i didn't do any of the hard work uh tom woodward did all the hard work and i made it into a plugin and put my name on it um oh okay okay i see <laughs> so yeah, link i link right to his blog post on it <laughs> um but yeah i like to have this one enabled in our state you for our sessions because then we don't accidentally dox anybody so yep um it's kind of cool so we'll leave we'll leave that neat. enabled mm -hmm. um but uh yeah so that's that's the kind of core plugin set so if you are wanting to go through and clean up stuff you know take a look at what you have here not that if you have something enabled here sorry if you have something enabled that's not here that's not necessarily a bad thing it just means that it's not necessarily core to making domain of one's own work yeah so it may be related to the design of your site or something, something else up. yeah like we said with wp supercache you might not even have you're seeing that right now but maybe that's not in your site and that's because it's not part of the engine that makes things go it's sort Correct. of a nice little yeah, we don't actually have it enabled by default because we find that most people don't need it, but mm -hmm. um, but we do have it in some places. Um, anyway, uh, so that's that's uh, kind of the core plugins that make Domain of One's Own work. Let's let's take a stop on the themes uh, page real quick. Here, there's not a lot to say other than there will be um, for most of you the Onfold theme and a, a child theme of the Onfold theme with the name of your school. Yeah. Um, this is essential. If you have this, do not switch themes because um, a lot of the custom code that makes Domain of One's Own work with bringing the cPanel in and bringing WHMCS for account signups and that kind of stuff, that is happening because of this child theme. So um, you're not going to want to switch that. Um, there are usually we have a, at least one or two other themes in there as a backup. If something was to go wrong, we can switch to it and it's just like a good idea to have another like one of the 2020 whatever themes mm -hmm. um but uh really should never need them so you don't want to leave that how that is um then going further the last real big thing would be pages so there are some pages that come by default here that we set up to make your domain of one's own work there is of course uh, other pages potentially too. So on this one, we've got dashboard, homepage, privacy policy, request form, user information. You may have these, you may have more than these, um, but you certainly have something that's set as your homepage. So um, it's important to note that the homepage is just a homepage. There's actually not, not anything super fancy going on here. Onfold has some um, built-in stuff to do like the layer slider and these little widgets and that's what mm -hmm. we're using here but um and as part of the avia avia layout builder, yeah. layout builder. but um you know uh, it's not there's nothing crazy complicated going here which means if you wanted to make your own custom home page you can just simply make a new page you know with the add nude button and use whatever tools are in here. You could even use a plugin if you wanted to, like Element or another, or another page builder, and make a homepage. And when you're ready for it to be the homepage, you would just change that in settings reading. Um, oh, uh, that's not actually true. I just realized now that that's actually handled by um, the theme as well. But my, my point being, you can still you can edit this home page right yeah. um and what i would do is i would make a new page to test right call it test home page test out your solution there and then when you're ready you can go in and edit the home page to uh match that use the things that you wanted yes um so the other um the other ones here though dashboard if i click on this this is as a reminder the dashboard is the page that you know shows cpanel or um has people um sign up for an account if they don't have one if i click on that you're going to notice nothing <laughs> um and that is because this is a special page that we design as part of our our custom theme to make domain one's own work so you're really not going to want to touch that page at all mm -hmm. um if you need to make some kind of change to that page let us know and we can we can help you with either editing some of the theme files or possibly 
like I made some minor changes to that when I was a domain of one's own admin, but what I did was actually go into the appearance customize menu and I did some additional CSS in there that applied to the whole site instead. Okay. Um, and that's obviously very reversible, right? So I could mm -hmm. just comment out my CSS or delete it if it broke something. Um, the thing with the dashboard as well is just going back to that remove dashboard access plugin that you were talking about, mm -hmm. where that's turning off, you don't want people who this are dashboard. authors, it's turning <laughs> yeah. off this dashboard in favor of this other dashboard. So yeah. On a it, standard WordPress site, you go to URL slash dashboard, it'll go, oh, you want to log in. I'll just take you to the login page. But here, it takes you to your account dashboard, yeah. which I think is stylish. Yeah. Um, the other one that works very similar to that is user information. Not every site has this. Some people delete it or disable it, but um, the user information page you're also going to notice is empty. And this is, sometimes it's called migration information, but basically there will, in most cases, be a page that allows people to set an SFTP slash FTP password um, and also get a backup, a full backup out of their account. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, a very common thing um, to have. You, you'll notice that in state you here and most sites it'll be under manage your account and then user information. Yep. And it looks like this. Um, so that that's um, that's another one that is sort of manually defined. Um, there are ways to edit that, and if you know uh, via the theme files, or if you want to, you could um, you could have a a different type of site, a different page linked to from here that then would link to this one. There's a lot of combinations of things that can happen, but just note that this is one that you can't out of the box just edit. Mm -hmm. um, then, but other than that dashboard and user information page, the rest of these are really just standard pages. So even here we have a request form. Now we don't have the state you site set up to, to require the request form, but certainly lots of schools do. And when I click on this, you'll notice that this is just a gravity form block basically. Um, so the, the form itself, I can actually go and edit if I go into the gravity form section here and you can have this look and say whatever you want to do. If you're comfortable with gravity forms already, you know that there's a lot of things that you can do in gravity forms and that's all fine. Note that on, a, on the technical side of this, the way domain of one's own works as a system is it's just saying, hey, if we have an account and they don't have the author role or better, right? If they're not author or admin basically, um, bring them to this request page, yeah. right? Uh, re this form page. So you could have this form say whatever you wanted to say. Um, you could make a second form. Like if you wanted to test something out and you say, I'm going to make a new form, we'll leave the existing one in place. You could do that. You can make a new form, show it to your colleagues, say, does this all look good to everyone? And when you're ready, you could swap it out. You could change that request form page. Um, if I edit it here, um, I could swap this out to use a different form, right? If I, um, if I, I only have one form right now, but you can select that over here in the gravity form section. You can also put more information here. You can literally, it's, it's Gutenberg, right? So you can just start typing, Hey, Hey, fill out this form, please. Yep. Um, you can put whatever you want there. You can put links to more information. You could put a video, anything that's possible in WordPress is possible there as well. So that is ultimately just a page that you can edit. Um, most people just have that form there though. Um, so, um, and then, uh, you know, we have a privacy policy not every site's going to have that, but you know, you can also have, of course, other pages on the site. Um, finally, you know, you can have posts too. Uh, <laughs> now by default, the posts aren't going to show up anywhere. Um, the way we have things set, but you could link to different categories. You could have the posts, set up um, uh, to show up on a different page. There are ways to do this, right? Um, and we can definitely help you with that. But that kind of leads us to another thing that I thought would be good to talk about, sort of like what is here, right? Like what what do you have in this main site versus maybe should live other places right. on Domain of One's Own? Um, so yeah, yeah one, this... one th sorry, go ahead. Well, I was gonna, I was just gonna say just in the name of keeping things sort of trim and speedy because this is where all your users are going to go. How 
you structure things can have a lot of impact on that. Yeah, it's, I would really advise folks to, if you have, say, uh, additional documentation or blog posts um, or anything like that that you want to make for your project, I would suggest you consider not doing it on this site just to keep this site as small and lean as possible for the reasons Pilot just said, right? Um, so it's not going to necessarily break anything if you don't do that, by the way. we have There's plenty of schools who do. Just thinking as a matter of what's the ideal place for these things to live, it's probably good to keep this site as simple as possible. Yeah. Um, and, and trim down as possible. So what can you do, right? If you're not gonna put something here necessarily, what, where can you put it? Well, you can still, you could put it in a different cPanel if you wanted to, but you don't necessarily have to. Keep in mind that this cPanel is available to you. You're not gonna wanna uh, put tons and tons of sites because sometimes a lot of high traffic sites in one cPanel can actually slow things down. But to have a yeah. few sites is very normal <laughs> and, and something that we would suggest even. Um, so if you're going into WHM, kind of taking a trip into WHM for a second here, and you go into your list account screen, if you sort this by setup date, for most people, that first thing, the first thing created will be the cPanel that holds this site. Um, so if I go in I've been in going here, through it alphabetically for years. I figured I this trick out a couple months ago, and it's a life changer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> for someone that works at Reclaim. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like an idiot. I feel like a fool. No, 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 don't worry. Don't I did the same thing. <laughs> um, but that would be my suggestion because there isn't necessarily a WHMCS entry for this site. That's the yeah. thing to keep in mind. Um, because it, it kind of exists outside of a person, right? Um, so I would sort that by setup date. But then when you get into that C panel, you can go into my apps and view things that are now we have a, a couple different things in state U. Um, but you know, you could have, for instance, your domain of one's own landing page with the links to WHM and, um, WHMCS and tools like that and our support that lives in this same C panel, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the, um, documentation site that most schools start with at least, um, or most schools have, but, um, you don't have to use necessarily mm -hmm. is usually lives in that C panel at slash docs. The cool thing about that one and the domain of one's own admin, keep in mind that that's using a directory. So if I go to that site here, it actually looks kind of like it belongs on the same uh, whoops, URL, uh, the same yeah. domain. It, it, yeah, well, and it is on the same domain yeah. technically, right? But it looks like it's part of one WordPress install, even though it's not technically. Um, so Trick. You can do a lot of things like that, right? So um, uh, you, there's even a nice link to go back to stateu.org from here, mm -hmm. right? So, um, but this is its own WordPress um, site. So this has its own login. It has its own, um, of course, database and files and stuff, which means that you can make this thing do whatever you want. It's not going to really meaningfully affect the main site. He also means you can break things over here. You can be a little bit more experimental potentially. So if yeah. you're looking to spin up your own documentation, I would consider doing something like we do with our default documentation and put it in a subdirectory or maybe a subdomain, right? Maybe it's at docs.stateu.org potentially. Um, there are a lot of different things you can do though. Um, but keeping yeah. it separate keeps it sandboxy, I guess. Keeps yeah, it I think sandboxing is a good way to describe that. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, so it it allows you a lot of flexibility too, right? So you can you can do things like get really fancy. Like maybe you want to keep all page builder use, like Elementor and plugins like it. Maybe you don't want to use that on your main site because you're worried about things getting slow. There are schools that use Elementor, by the way. It's not necessarily a problem, but those plugins can slow down a really high traffic WordPress site, in my experience. Mm -hmm. Um, but you want to have a fancy site where you get, go crazy with the design, do it on a different one. You're not even going to have to worry about that affecting your main site as much. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's another kind of angle to think about when you're cleaning these things up. You know, maybe you have some things and you move them out to a different WordPress install. You could even use um, the WordPress's own import export tool. Like if you've got a bunch of posts, oh, yeah. you can definitely do that. Um, just go to tools, export, and uh, it'll ask you what you want to export. Just 
Maybe you just pick posts. Maybe it's only a certain category of posts, right? Mm -hmm. um, note that this tool now, when you go import on the, the future home of the content, when you import, it'll ask you if you want to import images. So you can say yes. Um, they never used to do that, which made it kind of not that useful. I remember uh, it never used to do that. And I remember moving over a lot of images manually so that Im things wouldn't break. And it was... Yeah, it will now do that as long as it can, as long as the posts haven't been deleted in the old place, right? Mm -hmm. Like they have to exist over there for them to be able to load the images in. But once you do that, then they're on the new site and then you can delete them from the old site. Um, so that's a good strategy that I would personally use if I wanted to make this kind of change. Mm -hmm. um, again, not that I'm saying this is necessarily a bad thing. I'm more, more thinking strategy long term, right? Um, so if you have this stuff in your site right now, it's not necessarily a problem if things are working for you. Um, okay, so some, some other things I um, wanted to kind of chat about in terms of the homepage. So, um, you know, the, the Onfold theme itself is actually pretty flexible. It's one of the reasons we use it, um, mm -hmm. it is... It, yes, we have it look like this, but we mentioned before that you could technically make a custom homepage and set that and we could help you with that or you can port those changes into the homepage that exists. Um, and so I thought maybe we'd kind of demo that a little bit and what that might yeah. actually look like. Before we even go make a homepage, um, I wanted to kind of show like what is possible with Onfold because the, if you go, Onfold's kind of a weird theme to be honest mm -hmm. and it has very little in the customizer um yeah. there, there's like really almost nothing there's menus and i guess there aren't we're not using any widgets really um but there's not going to be much here um and for onfold that stuff lives in a different menu it lives in this theme options menu yeah in fact we usually when we're doing training at least we usually just tell people you know what don't worry about the customizations menu there's not going to be a lot there for you but there's a whole space that's dedicated to everything that you could do. And it's over here in this little bar. Which is yeah, it, it's one of those things that's super nice if you're less familiar with how these things are often done. However, if you are familiar, <laughs> it, it'll be, I remember the first time I went looking for this stuff, I was like, does Onfold have no options? Like, what is this? How did um, you get it to look like this if there's nowhere to make it look like this? <laughs> yeah, so, so theme options, and there's a whole big menu here. There's a ton of stuff in here. So first of all, you can, you can from here, select which page is your front page. So before I mentioned that you could make a custom homepage and set it, well, that's where we can do it. Yeah. You can change the logo from here. You can change the favicon. Um, there's some other settings like light boxes for images. Okay, that's mm -hmm. cool. I would not use this page preloading option personally. This this will basically put a little spinner on your page while things are loading. That's kind of an old web thing, and by old I mean like late two thousands, and um, it, were... it it actually makes things feel slower in my opinion. It's true psychologically. <laughs> um, yeah, because it means that most of the time you're looking at this loading indicator when behind you 98% of the page is loaded, but maybe not one image, right? Yeah. So, um, there's some layout options in here. Um, there, if you go to general styling, that's interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Um, if you go to general styling, you can you know, uh, edit scheme. some of the primary colors and things and, and the color scheme, that's really cool. Advanced styling, I haven't even, wow. Okay, apparently you can get really, really Well, specific. this feature is an active beta. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Um, so I've never really used this, but uh, you know, maybe you can do a ton. This is again one of the really kind of nice things about Onfold. It's also maybe. something that means you don't have to learn HTML. You just say this, or you don't have to learn CSS. You say this HTML, and then this yeah. HTML element, and then instead of figuring out how to target things with CSS, don't even worry about it. Yeah. Um, there's some options for the way the menus show up, you know, alternative menu, mm -hmm. um, all kinds of things in there. The header option, this is kind of one of the primary things I wanted to mention here is this, uh, let me go back to the front end. This whole section up here is something that can be changed in Onfold. So you can have the logo uh, in the center, right, and have the menu above. You can you can do all those types of things. Um, you can change the sort of size if there's a literal separator 
You can get really specific with that stuff. Uh, sidebar, we're not really using the sidebar in most places, but there are um, places where the sidebar can show up um, on Unfold. Um, so you can change what that sidebar looks like. I will mention too, I forgot to mention this earlier, but when you're looking at a particular page in Unfold, say the request form, um, you can actually down here in this layout section, decide whether there is a sidebar or not on oh. a particular page. Wow, things I'd never ever knew about ever. Took me a long time to find that one. On when I was at St. Norbert, I spent a good two hours writing custom CSS to hide the sidebar. Oh. And then I found this option later. <laughs> I bet that was a really good moment for you. I bet you Work felt really smarter, happy. not harder. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would have been happier if I would have looked for this first. But yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> my point is though, like. Onfold offers a lot. Like I, I really think the move for most people is to use these options to make the thing look the way you want it to instead of changing to a different theme, um, which will require some work. Um, when in again, some of that we can help you with, right? But um, I think this is the cleaner path. Um, so yeah, and I should say here, let me demo this. If I change this to default, and then I go to this page, this form page. This is the sidebar, right? Oh. I don't really want this on the forum page. Like, what are people searching for, right? Uh, there's no categories. This isn't really a Recent blog post. Recent comments. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I can go in here and just go uh, click on layout and then no sidebar. I can also, um, instead of changing that for that one page, I could go into this sidebar and say the default option for the sidebar is that there is none, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's all stuff that you can adjust. Um, so that's an option. There's a footer section, you know, it, what's in the footer? Is there anything in the footer? That kind of stuff. Um, the layout builder, that was the, the um, layout builder we were looking at for the homepage. So there are some settings in here. Personally, I haven't really messed with this too much, but you know, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of stuff in here. We're not gonna go through the rest of this because honestly the rest of this is I've done less a, important, um, I think. Um, maybe the bit. blog settings page would be good, but yeah, I've done a tiny bit with the layer slider, but not, but not in here. I've done it through the, um, as you were saying, the homepage page builder sort of thing. And even yeah, then, I think the, this is sort of like meta settings for that slider yeah. thingy. And it's um, it's not really it's not really something that you have to touch, honestly. No, no. Um, I think you can delete the, remove the, it's called it a bundled plugin. I think what they mean is they've taken a layer slider plugin and rolled it in as part of Onfold, yeah. which again is kind of cool for us because we can offer it um, to all of our folks without folks having to worry about like, oh, is the slider plugin out of date or something like that? Yeah. Like, no, it's just part of the theme you're using. So, mm -hmm. um, but you could technically turn that off. I've never done that. Um, no, but you, I, you could. That's what makes the layer slider is what makes the, you know, when you load the page and all of the images fly on, uh, that is the layer slider right yes. there. Yeah, good point. Thanks. We didn't actually say that. <laughs> and, so, and two, it allows this little layout thing here too, right? Yeah. Um, but to keep in mind, like the, a lot of this is from, um, you know, a time before Gutenberg, right? So, um, this was kind of the only way or like the only easy way to do a lot of these things. But now mm -hmm. if you prefer to build things in Gutenberg or uh, a page builder plugin, you could use those instead, right? Um, so now knowing how many options there are, um, let's just kind of talk about like making let's, a home page, like what that what would that look like. Yeah, so um, we'll call this test home page. Um, I'm going to set no sidebar right oh, down here. Okay. <laughs> you don't want recent comments on our homepage? I feel like <laughs> I feel like it's sort of, it's a classic to have that little sidebar. Yeah. I know I, I've argued with I somebody about I think on a blog that makes sense. I don't yeah. love it on a domain one's own homepage. But no, I, that's I fair. mean, that's fair. it's up no to sidebar. you. No sidebar. You know, because there's okay. no blog posts is the thing. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, keep in mind um, that... Uh, Gutenberg is actually getting more and more suited for this, right? The, the the new block editor, you can go to this plus button here and there's all these like patterns that you can kind of start out with, um, which can do some kind of fancy things. Of course, you can just go into the blocks and grab like, I want some columns and whatever, but I kind of like starting with patterns. Um, so 
because uh, it kind of shows you what's possible, right? Ooh. So maybe you maybe you do this, right? And yeah, you, and then you, okay. You have some. Maybe we have some information about, like you know, what is domain of one's own? It looks up like here. a museum based on the block that you chose. This looks like membership to a museum. Yeah, it totally, it totally does. <laughs> um, but, but you know, uh, for instance, like maybe you've got um, information about. Uh, you know who who can use this? Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's like oh, for for students, uh, what, it's for you... it's for faculty and staff. Yeah, and then and you can use those sort of blocks underneath to say, oh, if you are a student, you could do your coursework here, and if you are faculty and staff, you might put a portfolio. Yeah. Like so you can you know you can go through here and kind of. Um, clean up some of this stuff that you maybe don't need. That's that's why I'm talking about with the patterns thing. Cause yeah, I, yeah. I will say, honestly, I don't interact with these features a lot and I'm always kind of surprised what is possible now. I have to turn off my spell checking thing cause it's like littered all over the place with crazy amounts of uh, stuff here. It's so not recognizing me. the word domain. Yeah, I don't know, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Organizations, okay, it did organizations all right um so you know there's there's um a lot you could do here right um you could do any, anything you can do with the wordpress uh block editor right mm -hmm. um and keeping in mind that that home page there's really nothing fancy going on here we, we have on the default home page this get started link all this does is link to the dashboard page right you can change this if you wanted to uh you can replace it it doesn't have to exist at all um, there's a ton of things you could do. Um, I do recommend having a link on the front that is basically just a, a big flag that says click here to log in though. Yeah. I, I want to mention, uh, UNF's, um, homepage. I really think they did uh, excellent work there. I'm not positive. If I have the, I should have pulled this check. up ahead of time. Um, yeah, I do have it right. Okay, you do. So this, yeah. I believe they're using Elementor here. Um, but, yeah, uh, so. The there's a you know this is a cool showcase of I think a, a pretty well thought out page mm -hmm. in terms of you know you've got some fancy visuals and also get straightforward to what is this thing you sign up you build something you can publish stuff on the web cool yep. um so and then Who's they have it, some examples in here um there's uh OU OU create is a good one create OU .edu. Yes. Um, is, this one is a great example because this includes um, Domain of One's Own and WordPress multi-site. Mm -hmm. And so they have to kind of talk about WordPress and what it is. And then, um, you know, when you go on to, in their case, they kind of push people into WordPress multi-site. And if they need more, then they suggest people use Domain of One's Own. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of has to sell the sort of both the the why and how of the technology a little bit throughout this yeah. site. Um, how so people if think through what they're trying to do and then they can go find the right place to do it. Yeah. Um, uh, when I was at SNC, um, I, I was going to say, are you going to show off night domains? I'll show off night domains. I did nothing here to be clear. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, I had a student um, do all of this and basically I helped I clicked the button to switch it to make it our homepage. That's all I did. Um, and uh, But I, I think we, this was good. We really wanted to sort of unclutter this a little bit mm -hmm. and have it look attractive. And then we wanted a very simple, like, well, how do I use this thing? You go sign right. up. Here's some documentation. Use the tech bar for help, which is the uh, peer mentoring uh, center staffed by students. And, hey, we want to see what you're doing. Share your creation with the community. Right. Community so we had a link right. to that. Um, and then down here we had a frequently asked questions page that has existed almost as long as the project. It, it's looked different over time, but there's some great ones in here. Like I love this. Like mm -hmm. um, oh, maybe it's not here. Oh yeah, is it really my domain if you grade it? <laughs> That's one I of can't put ones. up anything I want. <laughs> Ownership and, is a complex philosophical construct. <laughs> yes. Um, so so th there's a lot of things you can do, and you as you can see with our three examples we just put here and there are plenty of really great examples um and UMW we can drop these domains. links in the chat too so you can go explore uh just what people have done instead of just watching us click around oh right yeah i love, I love this one. shannon's work here is, is amazing really i think and in terms of again telling a coherent like 
hey, we have two services. We have domain as one zone. We have WordPress multi-site. Um, these things offer do? different things. Why would I want one or the other? I think Shannon's work here is an amazing distillation of that mm -hmm. on one page. So that's really great. But my point being is all of these examples, they all have different objectives, right? Like uh, the SNC one versus UNF, right? Like the, the UNF one is very focused on like a faculty community, right? Because that's yeah. what their project serves. The SNC one is trying to get like, hey, use this thing. We can support you and show us what you're doing with it. That's what yeah. we want you to know. Um, UMW. You've come here, you want to build something on the web, but you have two ways. What are the yeah. ways you want to use, you know? Uh, and OU Create is kind of similar to, uh, mm -hmm. to the UMW one in that way. Um, so, you know, maybe even taking a step back, maybe I should have done this earlier, <laughs> but mm -hmm. like uh, when you're thinking about your homepage, you know, what is, what is the story you're trying to tell here, right? Like we have some stuff in our built-in one about web literacy, digital identity, rec reclaiming, <laughs> your content and that's great stuff. I love that stuff. Mm -hmm. But how do you want to express that idea to your community? Or maybe you have a different idea that's more important to express here, right? Yeah. Um, so that's all good stuff. So um, that was a huge tangent. Well, not really tangent, it's important. But, you know, um, returning to our site here, right? We've got this test homepage. Um, let's say I'm done. <laughs> Let's mm -hmm. say this is all we're doing. Actually, I should put a button here. Let's put a button that let logs people in. So four tickets there's... per special exhibition for faculty and staff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. What is? Do you have any suggestions? I don't. No, know. No, I think that's I, that's that's what I would have put. Just yeah, <laughs> like I didn't even. Oh, write a oh, poem about yes. domain in one zone. Um, yes. So uh, I know I'm pretty sure there's like a yeah. There, I was gonna say Buttons. I'm pretty sure there's there just go. like a button thing. Okay, let's put a button here that's like sign in. Sign up. Sign up. Um, and I can make this link. button a link. And I'll make a go to dashboard. Oh. oh, that's neat. I didn't realize it would do those little nice previews for you. Yeah, it's kind of nice. I I mean, I obviously, I could have just typed in stateu.org slash dashboard. But um, this is nice. Yeah, it's good. So um, I could save this as a draft, of course. But keep in mind, this is not my homepage. It's also not on my menu. So I could also just publish this. Yeah. No one no really one... knows the URL other than you, you and me and everyone who watches this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but... Actually, I'll be honest. I forgot what the URL was. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I don't think I even specifically said it. I think I went with whatever it you know, picked. Default it to. So this is okay, but as you can see, some of our theme settings are making green text here where I personally didn't expect that to happen. So, yeah. you know, maybe I would change that. Um, I'm just noticing now we have an interesting links, links thing in the footer. That's really oh, it's funny. It's got a smiley. Make it, Taylor, I can, no one's going to be able to see it. You got to zoom in on that part of the Enjoy screen. Enjoy your stay. That's oh, great. I love that. <laughs> um, so, you know, Okay, this isn't part of the page though. This is footer stuff, right? We could yeah. we could adjust that, um, but you know this page is not the home page yet, right? So this is still yet. the home page. It's not even that page is not even on the menu. So you can pretty easily test these changes out when you are ready to make it your home page. All you need to do is go back into let's again let's say it's perfect um it is perfect yeah i don't know what else you would want all we need and this is a reference to our obs courses all we need is a, a, a gif of coffee in you know recently like tech a... Mug and a scrolling banner yeah. you know um, you gotta put some gradient on that yeah i wonder I, you know i probably have a, a gif of that somewhere but anyway um <laughs> all you need to do once you're ready is just go to this front page settings in um unfold and change it to test homepage, right? So there's a lot you can do inside of this box of unfold and even not using a page builder, right? Potentially. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's helpful to folks when thinking about cleaning up and customizing this. Um, anything else you want to add pilot? I sign off? think that's everything. I just, I mainly, I feel like the takeaway here is that if you want to make it, uh, you can, and you, you can should dream it. You can do it. If you, if you can dream it, you can do it. And there's a lot of ways to set up little tiny sandboxes so that you don't have to worry about accidentally overwriting something Yes, that you yeah. don't want to touch. So yeah. don't be afraid.
Great. Well, yeah. we'll see everyone in next session. See you later. Bye-bye.